Class 9RM at Noah Hill High School in Harrow is about to be taught a design and technology lesson with a difference. This lesson uh, forms part of a, a nine-week module for jewellery and we're looking at creativity and how to improve creativity and designing skills with children within this age range. So it's quite a, a fast-paced lesson using lots of colour images to really spark off their imaginations. Harrow is one of ten local education authorities that have just completed the Key Stage 3 National Strategy pilot. The aim of the pilot is to encourage teachers to put more emphasis on designing. We're looking at creativity today because when you're designing, it's really quite usual for a lot of you to just come up with tried and tested ideas. If you're asked to come up with an idea, it's going, it might be based on a sports person or it might be on your favourite TV character or a book character or something like that. We need you to move away from that and really start designing in a, more, in a broader context. In this third lesson of a nine-week module on body adornment, Sharon Giro is trying to encourage more original designing by giving students some rather unusual stimulus materials. Let's just have a look at this image. And I want you to tell me what the value of the image is. I don't want you to tell me whether it's good or bad yet. It's quite interesting, right? What is it? Who on earth would have designed something like this? It looks quite comical. It looks a bit crazy, doesn't it? Who do you think might use this particular interesting garment? I don't know if you can read the text. So I'll read it for you. It says, underwear necktie. Don't waste time getting dressed. In a single movement, you can slip into this elegant en ensemble. And there's a wide choice of patterns and colours. What do you think? Who might use this? We, we were both concerned, both interested in, in trying to um, develop in students uh, an awareness that they could actually be creative without resorting to second-hand imagery. We do find a lot of Key Stage 3 that students will often use sportswear logos and Disney uh, images or want to do so in their designing. And we want, to, we want to see confidence in the students, confidence in their own ability to come up with genuinely new ideas. The first activity that I want you to take part in today is just looking at what we think are some fantastic objects. And they're all from a Japanese book called The Art of Chindogu, which is useless or unuseless inventions. Sharon is hoping these images will prompt students to be more imaginative in their creative thinking. What other ideas can you imagine might be used for A mother with like small children, she's got like to school every single day, so she's got to like spread that around and give it to Are we working as a three? So this is a, like, a portable butter stick, it looks like a print stick, doesn't it? Yeah, that's what it's like. Yeah. So how else could you come up with a, a, a portable way of, of carrying butter around? Um, um, you can have it like just like one you 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 use it and then you chuck it away. Yeah, you could have it. Yeah, so disposable one. A disposable stick, so yeah. small small sessions refillable. Yeah. 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 Why are your ideas down? Because you're going to feedback. The whole idea of Chindogu is that it has a slightly anarchic feel that you, that you haven't you're not bounded by rules and that's exactly the type of approach we need from uh, students of design when and they're considering a design problem at, at its early stages. If you've got some chili powder or something in your eyes and then you're like doing that and it still hurts when you put water and you can just do that and then just... It's, it seems to be easy when you hit on the right sort of formula and um, you know the images that Sharon's using today are good for this in, in so far as they immediately engage, they amuse students, students look at them and think well that, that wouldn't work, that's ridiculous because that's absurd, but they're interested. What other ideas could you imagine might be more suitable for a design problem? What is another way of thinking about the problem? What is another way of thinking about hair bands? Yeah, you could have like a. If you sweat, the sweat doesn't go in the soup. Maybe if I say that. Yeah, that's the eyebrows. <laughs> no, because it might drip off. No, but you could have a hairband that it's not just one hairband, but it wraps around the hair so it doesn't drape down. Do you mean, can you write one of those bands that go all the way around your Yeah. Hair? And then you could have one at the back which stops the hair from falling. It'd be better than a big plastic thing going around your head. I think the interactions between the students have been quite encouraging in that I think um, they've made the leap of, of not, you know, they've, they've not just discarded the ideas. Some of them obviously, um, you know, in terms of real design value, they haven't got 
much value going for them, but they've grasped the idea, they've begun to think differently, they've begun to see the appropriateness of some of the ways that the Chindogu exponents think in design. Next, Sharon introduces IPAC, or Inspirational Product Activity Cards, to try to stimulate students' emotional responses and generate some off-the-wall ideas. What we've got here are two, two unconnected images. We've got an iguana and a mobile phone. I'm sure you're familiar with mobile phones. Don't know how familiar many of you are with an iguana. So if I was a designer and I had been approached by a company and they said they wanted an unusual phone, and I was going to use an iguana as my stimulus image, but what I, what I wouldn't want to produce is a baby of the iguana and the phone. So in other words, I don't want a phone that looks exactly like an iguana, but I want to take elements of this animal and bring it into this phone. You cannot just give students blank bits of paper and say, right, be creative. You need to give them a strategy. And we've been doing some work in Harrow looking at the way design, professional design consultancies um, come up with ideas seemingly from nowhere. And um, we've, we've appropriated them and tried to develop them so that they're relevant to the classroom. Put the body on the actual like, stand. Yeah, but we, what is this? We don't even know what it is. So like, how are we meant to like, explain what they're looking at me? Like, I think it's like, it looks like Star Wars. Miss? That's my word. Miss, this is like Star Wars. We don't know what to do with it. Buildings. It's just like any, just those so you're, you're going to, so you're, hard. you're redesigning buildings. What, the slug? Yes. Look at the slug. So think about texture. What can you see when you look at it? Don't, you're not seeing a slug. Slimy. Slimy. Very good. How could that be used on a building? Think about what, why that would be useful. It could stop oh, people. For, so there'd be no graffiti, burglars. would there, on that building? Yeah. Burglars wouldn't be able to they'd climb up off. because they'd slip off the, the edge of that building. You wouldn't be able to graffiti on it. Yeah. So there are things that you can take from the slug and apply to designing just some buildings. And remember, we're, uh, you know, we know you're not, you're not architects, so just asking to, it's really ideas coming up with ideas. I know. Mm -hmm. So like a leaf thing at the bottom. Yeah. So yeah, and that can be like the entrance. Oh yeah. And then can like, be like the, like the doors, and it leaves. And this is like really rubbish. And do, do a leaf pattern on like the door or yeah. something. And like they can be like, you know like the thing that can be like emergency doors and stuff. Yeah. I think strategies like this, even though they seem very simple uh, and almost random, is a good way to, to jolt them into thinking in different ways. And, and certainly redesigning a product with a random image which seems unconnected can sometimes get them to, to, to think in very creative and very divergent ways. Yeah, and you could probably have different views in each window, couldn't you? Yeah. So you might have your information on what programs are currently running and then your internet screen could be here and then perhaps here could be the stored files so that you could see everything on one screen at exactly the same time because of the way that you've separated it. Yeah. What I want you to do is I want you to develop this idea now and draw it again but really now thinking about how you're going to shape the screen and the actual monitor based on the curves and the flexibility of this animal. So you're going to think about transferring these skills to the designing of your jewellery. Only now does Sharon make the specific connection with jewellery. What sort of starting points could you take then? Looking at the, the cards that you've got, so I don't want you to change the cards that you've got, I want you to use all of your cards now and think about how you can apply those to designing a piece of jewellery. So, Charlotte, what card have you got? Can you, just, can you just hold it up so people can see it? A tornado and a telephone. A tornado and a telephone. So, if you were taking elements of the telephone or the tornado to design a piece of jewellery, just quickly off the top of your head, what could you use? Um, spirals. The spirals. Tornado. So, would that be the outline or would that be a pattern on the, on the jewellery? Pattern. So, could have spiral pattern on the jewellery. Anything from the telephone that you think might be useful? Swirly bit at the side, the, the decoration. Yeah, so you could use the, uh, the decorative panelling on the side of the phone as part of some engraving or something on your jewellery. Excellent. I'm hoping that they will now 
see that you don't have to just copy an image, that you can take it apart that, into its smaller sort of sections and then combine different parts and come up with something that is really unique and unusual. We're now at the end of week six of nine. The students have refined their ideas and today's the day when they finally get to put all their innovative designing into practice. Remember we went into the IT rooms and you took your design ideas from previous lessons and then you developed them and turned them into a computer-aided drawing. Well, we had the milling machine then cut out your design. So we have this formal or mould which has an exact replica of whatever it was that you designed on the computer. And we're going to then take these and turn them into a pewter cast piece of jewellery for you. I chose an eye for my pewter design as it's, an, it's a, to wear off evil and it's a good sign. And the Wiccan sign is a five-pointed star, which I, put, uh, which I incorporated inside the pupil. They've been good because it, it encouraged me to try different things and try out different ways of designing and experiment, basically. Um, my design is based on Chinese and Japanese um, cultural calligraphy and I've taken extracts from different um, different symbols and put them together to make my own. I think it's given me more imagination and it helps to use your imagination to make different things. One of the strengths of design and technology is it is a creative subject. It engages with the real world and it means changing the real world. When you try and solve a problem in design technology, it's about what you believe. You get emotionally involved. It's about making that difference and about putting something of you into that uh, solution. And as a result, it's very motivating and it's something that really builds people's self-esteem when they achieve something and it works. Now I know that I can design these little things, as in, because I, I bring myself down on me. I normally think that I can't design things, but I can. It's just, I'm, I'm very, I stick to the limits, but there are no limits when you're designing, so you can just do, feel free to do anything, and then it might come out really, really good. starting to go liquid. The pilot has now ended, and after successful feedback from the 80 pilot schools, the programme is being rolled out across the country during 2005. See, that you're, that's filled up with metal, that's going to be very hot, so we can take that out in a couple of minutes. Okay. I think they've uh, all started off with really, well, coming in thinking they were going to make jewellery and they had quite set ideas, pretty much things they've seen in, in, you know, in Argos catalogue in H. Samuel and they were going to try and copy something like that. And then as we've gone through, they've really started to look at things more widely and look at the influence of nature and, and pattern and, and shape and texture and try and bring that, bring that into their designs so that what they're producing is something that is unique to them. You can, if you just push out, push that out from the top gently. Keep pushing, that's it. There we are. I think it's really good. good. 